Right. Uh, good morning, once again, uh, good people. My name is Henry Makaneta uh, from the STEM Lockdown Digital School. And today we carry on with our mathematics lesson, grade eight. Of course, uh, you may want to comment or to reach me on the Twitter line at uh, Henry Makane Ray. And uh, today we are carrying on with uh, uh, expressions, the algebraic expressions as we did uh, yesterday. And of course, before we can carry on, I just want us to finalize the square roots. As we started yesterday, I want you to note that uh, you know the square of the difference of square numbers does not necessarily translate to the difference of the square roots. For example, if you have got the square root of 100 minus 64, this uh, should never be construed with, uh, misconstrued with uh, the square root of 100 minus the square root of 64. As you can see, 100 minus 64 gives you 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. But the right hand side there, the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 64 is 8. So 10 minus 8 uh, is 2. Therefore, the square root of 36 is not equal to 2. But uh, the difference with the quotient uh, is that when you have the square root of 81 divided by 4, you can actually separate uh, the square root uh, into a fraction, meaning that you can have a square root of a fraction and then each uh, denominator and numerator get its own square root. Therefore, the square root of 81 divided by the square root of four. And this becomes the square root of 81 is nine and the square root of four is two. Then that would be nine over two. I just thought that maybe before we can start, let me uh, finish, you know, do the, 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 the square root. And of course, to recap on the square root of decimal fractions, if you have got 0, 0.49, we should know by now that 0, 0.49, if you want to write it as a fraction, you can move the comma twice to the right hand side. Meaning that once you've moved, moved your comma to the right hand side twice, this becomes a 49 over 100. Why is it 100? because you have moved uh, the comma twice uh, to the right hand side, then you have 49 over 100. Every, each time you move a comma, then it means you've got a zero there. The second time is zero, that's why you've got two zeros in, in, in 100 there. And of course, similar to the example that we have just done, you will see that each and every square root uh, or each and every number there, the numerator and the denominator, will assume its own square root. And this, of course, means that your numerator now will be the square root of 49 divided by the square root of 100. And of course, this will be uh, the square root of 49 is 7. And the square root of 100 is 10. And then you can take back your fraction, which is now 7 over 10. You can take it back to a decimal fraction, meaning that you will say that 10 goes how many times into 7? It cannot go, therefore you write 0, then comma. And you introduce a 0, so you have 70 now. 10 into 70 goes how many times? Goes seven times. So this actually means that the square root of 0, 0,49 is the same as 0, 0,7. Right. Uh, Linky, I see your hand is up. You have a question perhaps. You have a question? Right. Uh, 
let's carry on now. We are proceeding to the next one. Uh, we are still on uh, questions. Let's say that a special shop sells items uh, to a school. I want to. Sorry, sir. Yes. All right. Who is speaking now? All right. Kalalelo uh, Sisoho, can you say something? Kalalelo? Right. A second cover shop sells item to a school. And the following represents all the items that are sold. I hope that you are able to see the item. Uh, on the left column there, we, we've got items. The first item there is packet of chips, 250 milliliter juice, ice cream cone, burger, and a pie. So there are basically five items. The first one is a packet of chips, a 250 milliliter juice, ice cream cone, a burger, and a pie. Hendrik, sorry to disturb you. Can you hear me? Hendrik. Yes. Yes, yeah, your volume is, is so low we can barely hear you. Can you check your settings? Oh, I see. Yeah. Clearer now. Yes, it's much better. Is it much better? Yeah. Uh, ask everyone if they can hear you. All right, uh, let's go to Ondela. Ondela, can you hear me? Ondela? Okay, let me unmute Ondela. Uh, it's can you hear me? Ondela, can you say something? Can you hear me? No, sir. You can hear me? No, no sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we have now, uh, I'm talking about the, the, the selling price in rent, as well as the different items which are sold at the school. And as you can see on the screen, the items are as follows. We've got a packet of chips which cost 5X, 250 milliliter juice, which cost uh, 3X, ice cream cone, a burger, which is 8X, a pie, which is uh, 6X. Now I want us to answer the following question. The first one says, how much would it cost to buy a packet of chips and a juice if an ice cream cone costs two, two rand fifty cents? That is the first question. How much would it cost to buy a packet of chips and a juice if an ice cream cone costs two rand and fifty cents? That is the first question. And the second question, what will you pay if you buy a burger, a pie, and a juice? That is the second question. That is the second question. There. I want you to work it out. And please, uh, tell me if you'd like to attempt to answer the first one. You can raise up your hands and I'm here. Let's let us please uh, let's work on the two questions. I've given you the slide there with uh, the items and the selling price. So you can see that the selling price is in a, an expression there five eggs for a packet of chips, uh, three eggs for juice, eggs for ice cream, eight eggs for burger, and six X for a pie. Now I want you to translate this into 
uh, red. In other words, how much would it cost to buy a packet of chips, which is now a 5X, and a juice, the 250 milliliter juice, which is 3X. I just want you to calculate that. So, and thereafter, give me an answer. Uh, I would appreciate if uh, we can carry on now. The first person to answer, please raise up your hand and then let's uh, hear what you have to say. The first one is a packet of chips and a juice. I hope that you can hear me. And you are told that an ice cream is two rand and fifty cents. So I want you to answer that. And then, of course, the, the the second question: What will you pay if you buy a burger, and a burger is eight x plus a pie, which is six x, and a juice, which is uh, 3x. So I want you to work it out as well. Is there anyone who would like to answer? Let's go to the first one. I'm sure you can hear me. Can I get a hand? Let me get hands. Can I get some hands? If you want me, I can go back to the previous slide. But, but I think uh, everything is fine now. You can see that the item. Right. Can we go to Megan? Megan, can you answer the first one? Right, uh, let's go to Caroline. Uh, Caroline Anthony. Caroline? Which question are we on? The question is how much will you pay if you pay if you purchase a packet of chips? A twenty rand. Yes, a packet of chips and uh, 20 rand. Yes? 20 rand. 20 rand. And how did you get yes. the 20 rand? Well, you, you take 2 rand and 50 cents and you times it by 5, which is the packet of chips, and then plus the juice is 2 rand 50, so then it's 20 altogether. Hello. Okay. So you say you take two rent and multiply it by two rent fifty and multiply it by five. Yes. For a packet of chips. And thereafter. And then you take two point five and then you, again and you times it by three. Uh, which who, is who's, who's to the juice. I am. Right. Daniel. Carrie. Yes, you, you multiply two rand fifty with five. So you can actually have five times two rand fifty plus Five times three, and then yes. after you add them together. If you want, come again. What? Hello, Pardon. Pardon. Alternatively, alternatively, you can just add the packet of chips and a uh, juice. And in this yeah. case, the packet of chips is five x plus three x. And what does it give you? Five x plus three x gives you eight x. All right. Then once you have yeah. eight x, you can now substitute the value of x, which is two comma five or two rand and fifty cents. Now, once you multiply two comma five by eight, you indeed you get 
to the rest. So thank you very much indeed for okay. taking the time and the trouble uh, to answer this question. Now let's go. I hope that all the learners are listening and you can you've heard what we said. Let's go to the second one quickly. What will you pay if you buy a burger, a pie, and a juice? What will you pay? How much are you going to pay? Can we work it out? And let us uh, get an answer. How much are we going to pay? Alexandra, have you worked it out? Let's go to some hands. Let's see the hands. Uh, yes, uh, so there's one hand. Can you keep your hand up, please? Yes, Nicole. Nicole, please uh, go ahead. Nicole Cut. Please go ahead. I cannot hear you, Nicole. Right, you can carry on, Nicole. Um, number two will be 42 and 50 cents because a burger is 20 rand, a pie is 15 rand, and a juice is 7 rand 50. So you add all of those together and you get 42 rand 50. Yes, but how did you add it? Can you tell us what did you add first? First, you add, um, first you take um, two rand. Uh, Nicole, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so you take two rand fifty times the juice, which is three. So you take two rand fifty times three, and you get seven rand fifty. Then you take eight times two rand fifty, and you get twenty, which is for the burger. So you say seven rand fifty plus twenty, which gives you twenty rand twenty seven rand fifty cents. Then you take um, the pie, which is six times two grand fifty which gives you fifteen grand and then twenty seven grand exactly. twenty seven grand fifty plus fifteen equals forty two grand fifty okay And well, we seem to have lost uh, Nicole, but uh, the idea and the method that she has used is the correct method. Yes, I fully agree with you. You substitute uh, 250 in every value of X. And of course, there are two alternative ways, or there are two ways in which you can do this. You can substitute uh, for your beggar two times 2,5 times 8, and so on and so forth. Alternatively, you can add your, your, your expression together. In other words, the beggar, which is 8x, then you can say 8x plus. The second one is a pie, which is 6x. Therefore, you have 8x plus 6x plus. The last one is the juice, which is uh, 3x, then you'll say 3x. Now you have your expression as 8x plus 6x plus 3x. That is what you'll have. And 8x plus 6x gives you 14x. And 14x plus 3x gives you 17x. And of course, once you have 17x, you can simply substitute. You can, your value of x is 2,5 or 2 rand and 50 cents. Then you multiply 17 by 2 rand and 50 cents to get 42 rand and 50 cents. So, yes, that is correct. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Nicole. Thank you very much indeed, Nicole. That was the activity that I had uh, for you this particular uh, afternoon. But before we can go to the next uh, activity, 
I just want to ask the last question. Uh, let's say that you are buying only an ice cream and uh, a burger. How much will you spend? Yes, Zidane uh, or Zidane. How much will you spend uh, on a burger and on an ice cream? You're buying a burger and an ice cream only. I see your hands are up. Two participants, let's see. Uh, let me see who's up now. Uh, Uh, Can I see the hand, please? Once again. Let's see the hands. Uh, Michelle, let's go to Michelle. Okay, oh, okay, Bali, let's go to Bali Musia. Bali Musia. Can go ahead, Bali. Bali, are you there? You can go ahead. Bali Musia. Can you hear me, Bali? Yes. Uh, Bali, can you hear me? Yes, yes go ahead. So for burger, it's the same round because eight times. You can speak, Bali. Can you hear me? Right, we don't seem to hear anybody. I don't know what happened to Bali. Yes, I can hear you now. And Bali? I, I, I don't seem to hear you now. Uh, can you hear me, Bali? All right, we seem to have lost Bali again. Right, uh, the next one. Let's go to the next caller now. Uh, let's see. Uh, who else can we pick up? Lerato. Lerato. Let's go to Lerato. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Lerato. <laughs> Yes, you can go ahead, Lerato. Say, I haven't found the answer. Okay, whilst you are still there, Lerato, we are, you, you buy only a burger and, and an ice cream, only. Yeah, I think it's 20 rands. 20 rands? Yes, sir. How, how did you find the 20 rands? I said um, 8x multiplied by 2.5. 2 and it gave me 20 rings. And how much do you get? And what does it give you? It gave it 20 rings, right? Yes, sir. So you get 20 rings, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right. Now that's the amount for only a beggar. What else are you buying? You're buying an ice cream as well. How much is an ice cream? Uh, 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 2 and 50. 2.50. So how much yes. is your total? How much are you spending? 20 rand. Okay, remember the 20 rand is for only for a beggar. You are buying a beggar and an ice cream. Oh, beggar yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the ice cream is 2 rand 50. So what is the total? Uh, sir, the total is 22 rand, uh, 22 rand 50. Exactly. The total will be 22 rand and 50 cents. So that will be your total. All yes, right. Sir. Yes. yes. Sir. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And the last question, maybe on still on this exercise. Let's say that you are buying only a pie. How much are you gonna spend? You buy only a pie and nothing yes, else. Sir. How much are you spending? Twenty rand. Twenty rand. Oh, How the pie. Spend? Yes, just the pie. Just the pie is going to be. That's the part. How much does it cost? It costs. Okay. 
15 wins. How much? How much? 15 wins. That's exactly. But how did you find it? Just tell me how did you get the answer? I said six times uh, two run 50. Exactly. So it will be six times two runs and 50 seconds, and that will give you a 15 runs. So definitely that is a the correct answer. And of yes. course, thank you very much indeed. Yes, Without any waste of time, I think we will proceed to the next slide. And I've got an activity here, uh, activity one, which I want us to look at. Uh, this activity says, uh, when David, excuse me, when David was asked to evaluate the expression 2n plus 1 plus 6n, where n is equal to 4, he wrote the following. It's he, sorry, not she. He wrote the following. He wrote 2n minus 1 plus 6n is equal to n plus 6n, which, is, which gave him 6n squared. Hence, when you substitute the value of n there, which is 4, David got 6 times 4 squared, which is equal to 6 times 8. And the final answer that David got was 48. Now, the key question is as follows. Is David's method correct? Is this answer correct? Justify your argument. Now, I want you to look at the equation. Question 2 plus 1 plus 6. I want you to solve that particular expression 2n plus 1 plus 6n. And thereafter, I want you to substitute uh, the value of 4. Where there is n, you must put 4 and give me the final answer. And tell me whether David's method is correct. If you agree with David, you might as well. Raise up your hand now and tell me that you agree. But even if you don't agree with uh, David, you are correct to tell me. But I, I, I want you to tell me what is the correct uh, method if you don't agree with uh, David's method. I see that we've got about 10 participants. Let's see. Uh, I just want to see the hands once again. Uh, Linky, is your hand up? Let me hear your opinion. Is David's method correct? Togozo? Togozo, I can't hear you. Yes, I'm here. And Togozo Ngwenya. Yes. Tell me, is David's method correct? Two n uh, plus one plus six n. Can you see the method that David uh, followed? Yes, it's not correct. It's not correct. I agree with you. David's method is not correct. Now, uh, can you give us the correct uh, method? What are you going to do? Togozo? Yes. Uh, um, what is the correct method? What is the correct method? I think you should, you should use board masks. To try and find the answer. Okay. All right. Well, we must use both masks all the time. Find the answer for us. What will be the answer? What will be the answer? Is there any other hand, perhaps? Let me see the hands. Let me see how many other people are there. Seth. Yes. I think the answer would be 
Because I used board mouse. Yes, I, I agree with you. That's the correct answer. But what I want to check is uh, how did you end up with uh, 33? Can you just tell me how did you end up with 33? What did you do? Especially about n. The value of n is 4. What did you do with that 4? What have you done? Did you substitute four in any expression? If so, which expression is that? Um, All right, let's go to Ashley Smith. Ashley, are you there? Ashley? Ashley Smith. Right, there seems to we have to lose we have lost uh, Ashley, uh, but I think uh, what Ndogo is saying is correct. Uh, the correct answer would be thirty-three, in the sense that the first thing that you need to do is to simplify your expression. In other words, you will simply collect the like terms two n plus six n. So two n and six n are definitely. The like term. So once you add 2n and 6n, you get 8n, and of course, plus 1. So for each value of n, now you can put 4. You can substitute uh, for the value of n, which is 4. 4 times 8 will give you 32, and of course, 32 plus 1 is 33. So definitely, David's method is not correct. You can see that uh, David got the final answer of 48. But even the manner in which uh, David uh, simplified his, his expression, because suddenly, instead of uh, adding 2n and 6n, you get 8n. David said 6n plus 6n is getting 6n squared, which is completely incorrect. Because at this point we don't have we don't have any exponent. Now the substitution as well is wrong. If you look at the substitution that uh, David did, he said six times four squared. That is in, uh, four squared gave him eight, and four squared should be sixteen. So he said six times eight is forty-eight. So the correct the, the method that he used is wrong, and the answer that he got is also wrong. Uh, the substitution that he made wrong altogether. Therefore, Ntogozo uh, was correct. I think, as you can see, we have agreed that David's method is not correct. The correct method is as follows. All that you need to do is to simplify the expression. We have the expression here, 2n plus 1 uh, plus 6n. And of course, you also have you add them together. Once you have added them together, you will have uh, 8n plus 1. And of course, n is equal to 4. Then you can substitute 8 into 4 plus 1. You substitute 8 times 4, 32. Plus 1 is 33. So your answer there will be 33. And let's go to the next slide. Let's look at the next uh, activity, which are 10 activity two. Write an expression for the perimeter of a rectangle with the length 3x plus 5 and the breadth is 5x. Calculate the perimeter if x is equal to 4,5. So it can be 4,5 a unit. Uh, it can be any unit there. I think in this case, let's use a centimeter. You can use 
tensile tends to be 4,5 femtool liters. The first thing that I want you to do is to write the expression for the perimeter. Remember, uh, we will define the perimeter since your Last year, you have been taught that a perimeter of a shed is ready this year. You were taught again, or we are teaching you now that the, we are actually reinforcing the knowledge that you already have from previous grades that a perimeter is the distance around the edge of a shed. Now, I want you to write the formula for the expression. Let's see. How many hands do we have? Let's see how many hands do we have? The distance around the edge of a shape, the perimeter of a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle. Can I see some hands? Perimeter, right, Michelle? Let's go to you, Michelle. So I would like to say, um, so you just giving us the questions, but she ain't right, explaining Michelle, Michelle. what the exit represent. Cause I've been, so I've been trying to ask those questions. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so I've been trying to say, what do the axes represent? Because you're just explaining the question, but you're not explaining what does the what do the axes represent? The x. Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, the x represents the expression, the algebraic expression. Remember yesterday when we, in fact, two days ago when we started with the lesson on algebraic expressions, we said that uh, an algebraic expression is a combination of numbers as well as uh, uh, variables together with uh, operations. So in this case, 3x plus 5, we have a number there, which is 3. We also have another number, which is 5. We also have a variable x. So x is a variable. We also have plus, the plus sign, which is uh, an operation. So the combination of uh, numbers, variables, and operations, that gives you an expression, what is known as the algebraic expression. So today, I'm saying to you, write, that's why the question says, write an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle with the length 3x plus 5 and the breadth of 5x. Do you remember the perimeter? I said that the perimeter is the distance around the edge of a shape. It goes hand in love with the area of a rectangle. How many sides does a, a rectangle have? Four sides, isn't it? So there are four sides of a rectangle. And we've got two times and two times. So that is basically what I want you to do. To write the expression. Can we carry on? Yes, sir. Right. Without any waste of time, calculate the perimeter as well, which is five. Now I've given you the value of uh, the variable, which is x, as 4,5. Now we need to substitute. So without any waste of time, I'm going to substitute. And this is how we proceed. As I've already indicated, I've said that the perimeter is the distance around the edge of a shape. We know that the length is given as 3x plus 5, and the breadth is 5x. The, the breadth or the width is the same thing. That is 5x. Now the perimeter. Uh, remember, a rectangle has got how many lengths? Two. Because the rectangle is four-sided. So you've got a length and a length. 
then you've got a bread and a bread. That is why I'm saying that the perimeter is two times the length. So it will be two times three x plus five, which is given as the length, plus two times five x. Now you can solve or simplify this equation, this uh, expression. That is the first thing. There are many ways to kill a cat, by the way. You can either uh, multiply the first bracket there and thereafter add the like terms. As you can see, we said that two times three X is six X and two times five is 10. Two times five X is 10 X. Now you add six X and 10 X to get 16 X as you can see on the board. Then you have 16 X plus 10. Now, if X is 4,5, then you can substitute the value of X as 4,5. Then you will have a 16 times 4,5. And 16 times 4,5 is 72. And of course, if you add 10 there, you will have 82. By the way, since the units are in centimeters, then it means the perimeter of your shape will be 82 centimeters. The perimeter of the shape will be 82 centimeters. That's how it so, that, that is one sir, of the... Can I ask you one more question? Yes. Um, since uh, here um, it says 16x, right? So the x represents 4,5. And then by the calculations, by um, the last uh, bullet point, it says 16 um, uh, brackets, 4,5. So do the brackets stand for mul multiplication? Exactly. Each time you see a bracket, you must know that to break that bracket, it means you have to multiply out. So yes, the bracket stands for multiplication. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Right, uh, this is our second uh, one, the second activity where we have been able to substitute and find the value of the perimeter. In the same note, if you are asked in an exam to find the area, let's say that you are given the same uh, uh, depth and, and breadth, and you are requested now to find the area, the area of the rectangle, then you can simply use the formula for the area, which is a uh, length sum, right? Then you can substitute values of x there to find the area. And of course, this brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, lesson. And I hope that you will continue to visit the Khan Academy for further website for more activities on this uh, our algebraic expressions. And of course, we will have our next activity, our next lesson. For those of you who may want to carry on beyond this uh, online uh, lesson, please feel free and contact me also on uh, 082-623-2148. I repeat, 082 23 You can just send me a WhatsApp if you have any query. Alternatively, you can go to our Twitter page at Africa Team Geeks. But also the DBE, uh, you can follow us on DBE Twitter there. Uh, we also want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, uh, Special Foundation, as well as uh, MS Zora for making it possible for us to teach. Uh, go online. Until we meet again uh, in our next lesson, thank you very much indeed.